it's time to talk about some pressing health issues. And you know that this month we have been looking at cervical cancer. It is one um, ailment that is claiming lives, you know, but you can't really do so much to prevent it. I have here with me in the studio, um, Dr. Anita Tibu. She is a family physician, Kolebu Teaching Hospital Polyclinic. And also one who needs no introduction now. She looks like, it feels like she's a family member of us because she's always here, Dr. Umkalsum Zakaria Adam. She is public health practitioner, national coordinator for YMWIA of M. W A G. We are back with this. Yeah. All right, ladies, you're welcome. Thank you. Right, Doc. So um, now I'm just going to leave it to you to take us through because you have been giving us a lot of education on this, you know, for the month of January. Yeah. And today we have, in fact, we have brought the whole female reproductive <laughs> system here, and we, Doc is going to take us through. So to start with, what do we have here, and how is this connected to cervical cancer in any way? So, okay. so um, okay. this is a dummy of the female pelvis. Mm -hmm. okay, so the female pelvis, like you rightly said, houses the reproductive organs of a woman. Okay. So we have the vagina. So the vagina is a muscular tube. Mm -hmm. And this, has, this is a protruded one. Yes. <laughs> That's not how it comes out. Yeah. But so then the vagina is attached yeah. to the uterus. Mm. Yes. And then the cervix connects the vagina and the uterus so okay. the cervix is inside oh. the vagina, vagina. Okay. and that is sort of the neck or the mouth of the uterus mm. so um if you take out the uterus this way this is the uterus and then this okay. is the cervix okay. so when we are talking about cervical cancer okay. it is a cancer that affects this part, this part. yes okay. so this so. is basically what a normal cervix looks like okay then you can have a diseased cervix oh, so when you have a diseased cervix then you have the ulceration so that's a source oh, you scary. can have plaques yes and, and this is what that. causes the bleeding and the discharge mm. and the pain that we are talking about as mm -hmm. symptoms of cervical mm -hmm. cancer but yes. this is inside yes so how would you know that this is how your cervix is beginning to look like <laughs> so you need to screen you need okay. to screen as much as possible so i think we have an image okay. that is displaying yeah, yeah, okay. Yes. Mm, mm. No, the first image, please. So okay. can we go to the first image? Yeah. No, the one before this one. Okay. okay. So, 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 you know, while so we, we are can, okay, looking so, at this, okay, yeah. just um, bring us up to speed. Okay. With About what previous we've done. stuff, right. what we've done, and where we are right now. All right, that's fine. So January is uh, Survival Cancer Awareness Month, okay. as we all know, and we have been spreading the word um, across the whole country about cervical cancer and the fact that it is a number one killer disease and um, also the fact that it is a highly preventable disease and the only way to know that there are some changes going on down there is for you to commit to um, particular screening schedules as much as possible so that is what we are drumming into the years of all Ghanaians mm especially females, that they should take charge of their health and make sure that they commit to a particular screening schedule. And definitely we should be able to conquer this cervical cancer. Awesome. Be now, can we go back to the images? So we talk okay. about this properly because sometimes people need to see yeah. so they believe and they know it's very serious. All right. So the first image that we have is um, the female reproductive system okay so it's showing the vagina down there yeah. as we can see and then the top is the uterus or the um, the womb mm -hmm. okay and the womb is connected to the ovaries on either sides by okay. fallopian tubes yeah and um basically what we are talking about is cervical cancer so the cervix mm -hmm. so we can actually see where the cervix is that is the mouth to the womb and it is connecting the womb to the vagina okay. and from this image you can see that the cervix protrudes into the vagina mm -hmm. so during sex when you are exposed to the hpv virus mm -hmm. it actually attaches itself to the cells within the cervix okay okay and that is where it causes changes mm -hmm. and once you have changes then this changes actually you have about 10 to 30 years okay. for you to be able to diagnose these changes mm. or the HPV infection as much as possible mm. and for you to be able to halt the progression 
from infection to precancerous lesion mm -hmm. to cancer. Mm -hmm. You get it. So we have this this I mean a whole lifetime okay. for us. So that is why we are emphasizing on the fact that we need to screen, screen, and screen mm. as much as possible. So this is basically right. A cross so it means that you may not know. There's no way you would know you have this. It is only screening that can help, right? Exactly. exactly. So if you are as home, you will know you have this problem. Yes. You remember in our previous um, engagement, we mentioned that one of the symptoms is the fact that you would not have any symptoms at all. Yeah. Yes. And the only way for you to be able to know is, is when you screen, you subject yourself to screening mm -hmm. because the cervix is hidden. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you need to screen constantly for you mm. to be able to tell. And the HPV infection, once you get the infection, it takes a long time. Yeah. It takes 10 years, 5 years, 10 years, sometimes 30 years for it to cause these destructive changes mm -hmm. we are talking about that we would eventually call cancer. Yeah. So why don't we screen so that we nip all of these in the bud as much as possible? Mm. So if we can see the next image, I think it will show us yeah. how a normal cervix looks okay. like so this is actually a normal cervix okay okay you see this pinkish um area smooth uh -huh. so this is a normal cervix even so in this its normal is... state it looks a bit <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, so this is this is actually a normal cervix okay and you see this tiny hole there yes we call it the external os okay okay and um the area around this tiny hole, mm -hmm. we have a junction there called the squimo columna junction. Okay. And that is where the HPV virus attaches itself and it starts to cause changes. Mm. And these changes normally we call them dysplastic changes. Okay. And they start one day, once, once these changes start, then the transformation begins and you tend to have growths, you tend to have sores mm. in the area. But the, the catch here is that if you are committed to screening, you should be able to catch this very early and nip it in the back. You know, last time we spoke, we um, discussed the pap smear. You know, can we demonstrate it? Can, can you show us how yeah. that? Okay. okay, so um, when we are doing the pap smear, yeah. it's basically taking cells from the mouth of the cervix. So the external or so then the squamal columnar junction. And then we do, we do that, and then we do histology. So it means that we do cytology, we do histology, we look at the cells. Yes, we can. <laughs> we look at the cells. So under the, the sample that we take, we yes. look at the cells under the microscope. Yes, and okay. then from there we are able to detect the dysplastic changes that have mm. taken place within okay. the cells. Okay. For some tests as well, they are able to test for HPV DNA itself. Mm -hmm. Yes, so when they take the sample, we have what we call the liquid-based cytology. They are able to mix it in a solution and then um, perform a test which detects the HPV DNA. Mm -hmm. So in doing that, you are able to definitely say that HPV is there. Mm -hmm. Yes, so those are two of the tests. Is it painful that to do? It's, it could be uncomfortable. Okay. It could be uncomfortable, painful. but it shouldn't be painful. Okay. Yes. And apart from that, we also have the visual inspection methods. Okay. So with those methods, you can either use a vinegar, plain vinegar, it's acetic acid, mm -hmm. and we use it to bathe the cervix, and then we observe for certain changes. So based on what we see, then we do other um, examinations okay. to further you know, diagnose. Sometimes it. when you go to the hospital for your pap smear, they give you the sample. They ask yes. you to go inside, show you what to do. With a vinegar, can I do it myself? You will not be able to see. No, I'm asking this so people don't feel like, oh, but I have no. a guard at home. No, no, no. Yeah, so yeah. you go and take no, something no, and no, you know. No, no, no. Okay. No, we, should, we should be able to observe. And when you exactly. do it at home, you will not be able to see. Okay. Yes. You don't have those you eyes. Can't, okay. yes. exactly. So can you so, show us? So in performing the examination, we have what we call a speculum. So the speculum opens up the vagina so okay. that we are able to assess the cervix. Mm -hmm. Like you said, the cervix is um, hidden. Yeah. Yes, and so we need a speculum to open up the vagina and then okay. we can see. So this is what the speculum looks, looks like. Mm -hmm. There are different sizes, yes. So based on um, the clinician who is attending to either the nurse or the doctor, they can select an appropriate size okay. to make it more comfortable for you. Mm. So we insert it into the vagina this way yeah. and then we open, open it up. up. Okay. Yeah, so when we open it up, then we are able to see 
the cervix. Okay. Uh -huh. So when we see the cervix, then this is a spatula in the pap kits, mm -hmm. the pap test kits, yes. And then we use the spatula and take Some a sample from okay. the cervix. We use both ends mm -hmm. to do that. And then also there is a brush. Okay. So there's uh, an endocervical brush. Mm -hmm. So this goes into the os. Okay. Yeah, so the os sort of like enters the uterus itself. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So it's the entrance to the uterus. So this takes samples of the cells around that entrance. And then we place all of them on a slide. So whatever samples we take, we place them on a slide. Mm -hmm. So we place it on the slide, okay. and then this is a slide that goes to the lab. Okay. They do their fixing and other uh, methods, and then they are able to detect the changes to the cells that we have picked mm. up. Yes. Okay. Now, so this is when you have the doctor do it for you. Yes. Is that the standard practice? Because when you are asked to do it yourself, you are not given these. Yes, because yes, you need true. trained you need trained hands to yes. be able no, to. No, I'm just I'm, I just want to know that is it also okay that I'm not given this, but I'm just given like some long tube with a bit of cotton and ask to yes. go to the washroom, do this, do that, do that. Just so when I go to my doctor, I don't go and fight that. Look, doctor, <laughs> my doctors came here and they say that you need this to open up. Why are you not opening it up for me? You know, so if you go and you are just giving that, does that work? Can you get it? Is it advisable to do it yourself? Okay. So basically, what she has um, explained yeah. is the routine test, the pap smear. Sure. Okay. It's actually better to have it done by a healthcare professional. Okay. Okay. But there are some self um, assessment kits mm -hmm. that are available that is given to you. So it's just like a tampon. Mm -hmm. You see how we insert yeah. a tampon? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So those self assessments two kits, yeah. kits are just like a tampon. Mm -hmm. You insert it and then you take a swab mm -hmm. and then you, you, you are given something to put it in and yeah. then you transport it to yes. the lab. Mm -hmm. Well, it should be able to take cells yes. for examination as well. But then when it comes to tests, mm -hmm. we need to look at the specificities and the sensitivities. Okay. Okay. And basically, I would say that for you to have it done, in um, in a hospital by a, 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 a trained professional, professional yeah. is actually better. Mm. But then, I mean, when it comes to convenience and all of that, the self um, assessment toolkit is also available, which okay. is just like as I said, is the tampon. So you see that the speculum mm -hmm. actually helps you to visualize the cervix okay. as much as possible. Mm. The the vagina is closed. Yeah. We have an anterior wall and a posterior wall mm -hmm. that are together. Mm -hmm. It's not open. So you need the speculum to open mm -hmm. it up so that you can visualize the cervix mm -hmm. and then take cells from mm -hmm. it. So definitely the pap smear done by somebody else should be able to take the cells mm -hmm. as much as possible compared to, a, 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 um, I mean, a self-testing kit. Mm -hmm. Okay, now okay. when I do, um, if I'm given the self-testing kit and I go do it, by looking at it, would I know whether there's something wrong or not. So for instance, maybe there'll be a color, there'll be something or that, or you will know. All right. So um, basically, if, you, I mean, you have a healthy cervix mm -hmm. and um, it's not, you don't have a, a, a cervix that is bleeding, you will definitely not get anything substantial mm -hmm. or color changes yeah. on your, on the swap. Mm -hmm. Okay. You just get maybe just something whitish or a discharge or something. Yeah of some sort, and then you take it to transport it to the lab, mm. okay? But then if you have a diseased cervix, which yeah. we have a picture of. Okay. So if we can show that, mm. a diseased cervix, that's, yes, exactly oh. this one. So you see the first one that I showed you, yeah. it looked smooth, smooth yes. all pink, yeah. but this one, you can see that there's obviously something wrong with it. So you don't even need a pap smear no. to diagnose this. This is obviously a diseased cervix. Mm -hmm. There's some growth happening in the cervix. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, in this part of our world, most of the cases come in this state or even in worse states than this. So at what state is this? So it is definitely, I mean, a diseased cervix. Yeah. You need to go through different investigations to, to, to be able exactly. to yes, stage okay. it as much as possible. Mm -hmm. But most people present in this state, which is very, very sad. 
Yeah. Because at this stage, the reason why they may even present mm -hmm. is that they may have this foul, smelly discharge mm. from the area. Okay. And also you see that the deceased cervix, mm -hmm. once you have the penis hitting Hit on this, yeah. the growth there is highly friable. Mm. So there'll be shedding. Okay. And then that is where the whole bleeding comes in. So okay. something that we call postcoital bleeding, mm -hmm. that is bleeding after sex. Yeah. You get it. So that alone will push them to come. Yes. And when they come and then you visualize such a cervix, obviously there's disease okay. or disease now, has happened if, if, and you need to treat it. If you are in this condition, okay, this is your cervix, it's disease, would this pose any danger to your partner in terms of intercourse? So in terms of intercourse, I'll just say that it's HPV. If definitely it has been diagnosed that it's HPV, then he's also susceptible to getting the HPV virus. Mm. And in males, because of the fact that they do not have a cervix, mm -hmm. the high risk HPV strains mm. can cause other forms of cancers in these males. Mm. Okay. Yes, they can have penile cancer, they can have oral cancers, mm. oral pharyngeal cancers, due to our um, change in orientation of mm. our sex, mm. sexual practices. Okay, so now we have another image on there what exactly are these all right so it's it's basically the same thing so this one okay. is practically showing you the one on the left yes. is showing you a speculum that has been used so the speculum has been passed through the vagina mm. it has opened it up and then okay. now you can visualize ah. the cervix get it and then this the the one on the right is showing a zoomed cervix mm. so this is what was visualized okay and um there is obviously a lesion there as well mm. so it's also deceased now at this point can it be cured so at this point as i stated it's it, it may look small here mm -hmm. but it's likely it may have spread to other parts of the body so you need to be diagnosed appropriately or it's it's extensive so you undergo other um, uh, investigations okay throughout I mean the whole of your body mm -hmm. so that the right staging is done and the staging we have stage one stage two stage three and even sub stagings mm -hmm. and then it's it's based on the severity of the disease mm -hmm. so once you're able to stage it it helps you with treatment planning mm -hmm. and then once you you, you um, have a treatment plan it also gives us the prognosis so the prognosis is, is how, how best we, I mean, the outcomes. Yeah. Is it going to be a good outcome or a poor outcome yeah, yeah. based on the staging? But what are the numbers like in Ghana? So I think, I mean, it's estimated yes. that yearly about 3,151 women mm. are diagnosed of cervical cancer. And yes, and unfortunately about 2,100 91 of them end up losing their lives. Very unfortunate. Yes. For such a preventable exactly. disease. Exactly. Anyway, okay. and the, the, so the, the, the catch here is the fact that you may not know or you will not know, you may not have any symptoms at all, you go about your normal everyday life and then one day something will happen, you go in there and it's a disaster. So yes. all of us, myself inclusive, we need to do something about this. This is your life. This you can't blame anybody, not the health minister, not government, nobody. Exactly. This is you. It is your sole responsibility. Doctors, thank you very much. Um, Dr. Om Kalsum Zakaria Adam, thank you very much. And Dr. Anita Tibo, thank you very thank much. You, you guys are doing thank amazing. You thank you. Anytime. Thank you for having us. So I, right. I would always say this again. Thank mm -hmm. you so much to City TV for having us and making us um, able to, to reach out to everybody. Of even course. those at the grassroots and that is actually what we want to do and also to our partners like okay. Ghana, thank you so okay. much for partnering we are always us. happy to support such worthy causes thank